In recent years, growing numbers of tourists have flocked to northeastern Brazil. Here, they take advantage of the region's beautiful beaches, its colonial architecture, and tragically, its children. It's very easy to buy a girl. It's like buying chocolate. TBN News traveled to northeast Brazil for a closer look at the area's child sex trafficking epidemic. Youth counselor Carlos do Bomba describes it as out of control. Taxi drivers, hotel workers, and drug dealers form an underground network connecting supply and demand. And every week, da Bomba's agency receives five to six new victims in need of help. After our interview, we walked to the beach across from our hotel, and da Bomba noticed children for sale right in front of us. Our translator approached a young boy working as a transvestite. He agreed to tell us how the system works. They come in the car. They ask how much it is. I tell them, and they say if they want me, and if they want me, they take me. Leah uses the $25 to $50 per trick to buy clothes and food for himself and his mom. He told us he started at age 14. His life of pain was clear. I don't like it. I hate it. I just do it because I need it. Brazil may soon overtake Thailand as the number one country in trafficked children. United Nations estimates that more than a quarter million are sexually exploited here. Much of it happens in the Northeast region, where child sex tourists arrive from Europe and the U.S. We see kids start at age 12, 13. It's a way for them to have an income, to receive money easily. And as if the problem of child sex trafficking wasn't bad enough, the worst may be yet to come. Many here fear the World Cup games, to be held in the stadium being built behind me, will bring a flood of tourists eager not just for sports, but for children. We are trying to find a way to avoid this. Egivaldo Tuarez works in child services in the metro area of Recife. His research suggests kids here are in danger. What we see before and after the World Cup is trauma in the communities. Most who work with youth here believe more tourism means more child exploitation. So public officials and nonprofits are teaming up to raise awareness and try to prevent a potential region-wide disaster. The social workers are very concerned about it, so they are working in prevention now with educational materials in the city and also giving workshops in the schools. Many in this region also recognize that a long-term strategy is essential to wipe out a tragedy that's deeply embedded in the culture. Poor children here typically grow up in small, crowded homes where they see sexuality that should be private and often face abuse themselves. They start early to see sex in a distorted way, so it's easier to start in this kind of life. Drug dealers also take advantage of kids addicted to crack and other illegal substances. It's also common for desperately poor parents to encourage their children to sell themselves. The moms, sometimes they put their children in this situation because they need help. In the case of Sophia, a 15-year-old we met, her parents simply looked the other way. Sophia says she stopped because she wants a better life. I realized it's not good. You can get pregnant and be unable to go on with your studies and get a good job. The U.S.-based ministry Compassion International is in the sex trafficking fight for the long haul. Compassion uses child sponsorships to fund ministry centers across the country. We are not only providing a place for them to come to avoid the streets, but we are concerned about giving them an education in a holistic way so they can have a different opportunity than their parents. Compassion partners with local churches to take care of children's physical needs, and it emphasizes academics, including a special curriculum that targets sexual abuse. Compassion's approach also emphasizes decision-making for a lifetime, it's a tough concept for so many children whose families desperately need help now. But prevention via one-child sponsorships may be the most effective strategy. In a recent survey, economists rated it number one in the long-term fight against poverty. I believe the best way to combat exploitation is the prevention we're doing in partnership with Compassion. And for that reason, Tuarez has become a regular at this project building relationships with kids in the hopes of helping them to realize their dreams. 
For these children, it's not too late. And it may not be too late for Leah. After our interview, we prayed for him and for his dreams. I would like to get married with someone I'm in love with and quit doing what I do. Leah told us he'd like to become a nurse. A true miracle, perhaps, that one child in so much pain would dream of helping others. Reporting in Recife, Brazil, Heather Sells, CBN News.